Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show where in this video we're going to talk about how exposure to warm temperatures have been shown in a recent study to prevent bone loss by acting through the gut microbiome. And so this is a really intriguing study that brings together a lot of different fields and it also has particular relevance for trying to identify treatment options for osteoporosis, a disease manifested by bone loss and increased fracture risk. And these two features are also age-associated conditions. And so as we'll explore later on in this video, we will look at how alternative ways of mimicking this approach could potentially have future therapeutic use. So I shamelessly stole the title of this video from the cell metabolism paper, Warmth Prevents Bone Loss Through the Gut Microbiota, because I mean it pretty much sums up nicely what this whole study is about. And so to break down this video, I'll begin by introducing just a general overview to osteoporosis and bone formation. And then we'll dive into this research paper that for the majority of it focuses on mice, whereby they expose the mice to warm temperatures and tried to understand how warm exposure prevented bone loss and discovering that this process was mediated through changes within the gut microbiome. So we'll introduce the gut microbiome briefly and also talk about the metabolites that they saw change during this warmth exposure. But as we all know, we are not mice. However, interestingly, the authors of this study also performed a human meta-analysis of the incidence of hip fractures and their correlation with temperature. So we'll look at that data as well. And then lastly, I'll summarise some of the take-homes from this research paper, some of the limitations, but some of the further questions that it raises and potential applications of this knowledge to treatments. So firstly then, what is osteoporosis? Well, it's the most prevalent metabolic bone disease that results in weaker bones and increased fracture risk. And this is characterised by a loss of bone mass and changes within the microarchitecture of the bone. And I also want to point out that this is different to osteoarthritis, which I mentioned whilst talking about Unity Biotechnology in a video a while ago, which is degeneration of the joints, whilst osteoporosis is the loss of bone mass. And so both of these are age-associated diseases, but interestingly, the most common type of primary osteoporosis occurs as a result of postmenopausal estrogen deficiency. And so bone remodeling is an active process that is coordinated by two different cell types, osteoblasts and osteoclasts. Osteoblasts are responsible for bone formation and osteoclasts are involved in bone resorption. So osteoclasts break down bone tissue and so the activity of these different types of cells fluctuates as the bone responds to external stimuli and different environmental stresses. So what does bone remodelling have to do with temperature? Well, as described by one of the authors of the paper, we were inspired by the fact that mice living in warm temperatures increased their tail length, which is a way for them to dissipate heat. We assumed that heat applied post-developmentally in healthy and during osteoporotic states might have beneficial effects on bone strength. And so this is the idea that rodents living in hotter temperatures, to be able to dissipate more of that heat, they can increase their surface area to volume ratio. And one way that can be achieved is by having a longer tail. And so the hypothesis is that temperature can influence bone development. And the idea that the authors had is to investigate whether or not that could be exploited to help prevent bone deterioration that occurs during osteoporosis. So to test their hypothesis, they needed a good model. And a good model for primary osteoporosis are surgically ovariectomized mice. And then to directly test if warmer temperatures could exert protective effects on bone loss, they performed the surgery on 16-week-old mice and then either expose them to 34 degrees or room temperature for eight weeks. And the remarkable thing was that the warmth exposure prevented the bone loss seen in the control mice. So the obvious question that this raises was why and how was this happening? And so this is where we come on to the gut microbiome, which amongst its many influences within our bodies, has also been shown to be an important regulator of bone remodeling. And so I've made several videos talking about the gut microbiome, which includes all the different bacteria, fungi and viruses that reside within our bodies. 
And the composition of this microbiome can be influenced by various factors. For example, I made a video talking about how diet can influence the microbiome. But several studies have also shown how it can influence bone metabolism. So given this information, the authors decided to analyse the microbiome composition of 24-week-old female mice that had been exposed to 34 degrees for 8 weeks. By comparing the data to controls, they could see that there were clear differences in the microbiome composition. For example, they could see a strong increase in the abundance of Ackermansia mucinifila. I probably said that wrong. Anyway, to show that the microbiome is important in these alterations in bone remodelling, they repeated the experiments by one, firstly applying antibiotics, which prevented the increases in bone strength seen with the warmth exposure. And secondly, they transplanted the microbiota of warm adapted mice to ovariectomized mice, which also was shown to prevent the bone loss. And so this highlighted the importance of the microbiome composition and its change during the warmth exposure. The question is, what about that change caused the changes seen in the bone remodelling? So to answer this question, the authors used a combination of metagenomics, whereby they could look at what different biochemical pathways were being upregulated, and metabolomics to see how different metabolites changed in concentration during warmth exposure. One pathway that stood out was an increase in polyamine synthesis. But polyamines include a variety of different organic compounds. And so specifically, what they saw was an increase in the levels of genes responsible for the production of spermidine and a decrease in the number of genes involved in the degradation of spermidine. And this is particularly interesting because a previous study showed that mice that were given oral supplementation of spermine and spermidine in an ovariectomy induced model of osteoporosis was sufficient to prevent bone loss. And this is in agreement with what the authors of this paper found when they supplemented spermidine at high doses in osteoclasts and saw that it downregulated some of the key markers of their activity. And so if you remember from the start of the video, osteoclasts are the cells that break down the bone tissue. And so this could explain the impacts that they were seeing during the warmth exposure of the mice such that warmth exposure alters the microbiome composition such that it results in a greater production of these polyamines, including spermidine, that could have the downstream influences of altering the activity of the osteoclasts, and therefore altering the balance between the osteoclasts and osteoblasts, preventing this deterioration of bone loss that's often seen in the overectomized mice. And so this data suggests that mechanisms that can increase the number of species within the gut microbiome that can generate spermidine, or through alternative ways of boosting spermidine levels, could be therapeutic options for preventing the symptoms that are seen that result in osteoporosis. And I like the way that it's described in this article summarising the paper that suggests that a treatment that would involve increasing spermidine levels would be very welcomed since spermidine has also been shown to have potential anti-aging properties. And so along with being able to prevent the bone deterioration, it might be able to help decrease hypertension, memory impairment, myopathy and carcinogenesis. And so this data is potentially interesting. However, as I said, this is done in mice. What about humans? Well, in the study, they performed a human meta-analysis on the incidence of hip fractures per capita and country worldwide. What they could see in the dataset was that there was a negative correlation between the average temperature and the incidence of hip fractures. So what this means is that the higher the temperature, the lower the incidence of hip fractures. And so this kind of supports potentially their data whereby warmth exposure to the higher temperatures prevented the deterioration of the bone loss seen in the overectomized mice. Moreover, they showed that by normalising the analysis to other known factors that could alter bone strength, such as calcium intake and vitamin D, did not influence this correlation, further supporting the importance of temperature in bone remodelling. But this is just a correlation still, and it will be important to gather further evidence to examine this link between warmth or spermidine increase and bone remodelling. And so other questions that this paper raises include, what about the temperature changes? is able to alter the microbiota composition. For example, our body temperatures remain pretty constant, even fluctuations to higher or lower temperatures. And so it's kind of fascinating that they did see such 
dramatic changes within the composition of the microbiome just by having exposure to higher temperatures. Moreover, this study suggests a link between the polyamine production and the changes seen in the bone remodeling, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there might be other changes within the microbiome or other beyond the microbiome changes that are causing this effect. Nonetheless, this reinforces how cool the gut microbiome is, or, well, in this case, how hot the gut microbiome is. And so on that note, I hope you've learned something, and as always, thanks for listening.